So we've got the bow sight leveled. We got all the accessories on. Now we need to start talking about uh, uh, about your arrow build. Mm. So what do you, what do you what what plans do you got this year? So this year I pretty much have all deer hunts. All so deer I'll hunts. Have a high country hunt. Um, hopefully with you. And then it'll be an archery coos deer hunt in August. And then just then back to archery deer down here in Arizona in January. And basically all of those are extreme open country, mm -hmm. spot and stock. Yeah. Very yep. little. Yeah, no calling, anything like that. It's gonna be long range engagement. No, no, you don't anticipate very much water sitting or anything like that? No, not this year. No, okay. too much water this year. Everything's gonna be spot and stock. Well, the reason why I ask is uh, we have a couple of different options for designing the arrow. I'm a huge believer in um, designing the arrow to, to match your hunt, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I truly believe that uh, designing your arrow for, the sp for your particular hunting style or the hunt that you have coming up mm -hmm. is, is really important. And when I say designing the arrow, there are certain aspects of an arrow that can cater better to certain hunts. So you saying that you're gonna do a lot of open country hunting, uh, spot and stock. In my mind, based off of my experience, that means that you know, you're gonna have shots probably out beyond 40, 50 yards, 60, 70, 80 yard shots. Um, obviously the closer the better, but um, stocking in an, in open country. So with longer shots in mind, I really like to design an arrow that is, is forgiving in trajectory meaning that it's, it's a little lighter weight, it's faster, so that the trajectory is less. Mm -hmm. The reason why that's important is, despite modern day range finders, um, uh, dis despite the ability to get a quick range with a range finder, more ranging, I, in my experience, I've had more issues from ranging errors on misses than pretty much any other thing. Um, so the flatter that trajectory, the more, what I call, the more range forgiveness your arrow has. And what that means is, if you're, if you're off on your range, even with a range finder, a yard or two, even out to 80 yards, we still want your arrow to be lethal. Mm -hmm. Now, you contrast that with a heavier arrow with a, with a poor trajectory, if you're off a yard or two at 80 yards, you're gonna be out of the kill zone. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to try to set this up with ultimate forgiveness in mind, and in, and for me, that is is range forgiveness. What what is your what are your thoughts on that? No, I think that's a great idea. I think there could be opportunities for longer shots, and you know, when animals are moving and you're trying to get a range, and sometimes you might not be able to get exactly where that animal is when you're going to take the shot. They might take a step, or you might have to move beyond a bush or something like yeah, that. Or, or, yeah, or or you pre you, you you pre range something and mm -hmm. and they're a little bit past it, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe a little bit in front of it. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of experiences like that where if if you if you if an animal moves and you don't have to 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 you don't have to redial or or heaven forbid you've come to full draw and the animal moves. Mm -hmm. If he's only taken a step or two, if you've got a flat shooting arrow, you, you're not gonna have to let down and redial. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously if he takes five steps, sure. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so what I've got in mind, um, you'd already talked about wanting to shoot a four mil this year. Um, you picked up some Axis long range, Easton Axis long range, really great arrow. I've got uh, quite a bit of experience with it, fairly new arrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one thing I wanted to point out, um, I'm a big believer in Easton shafts. Uh, the Easton axis long range that I was point, pointing you towards, um, one of the big reasons why I like it is this arrow is very consistent in spine, for not only from shaft to shaft, but also circumferentially. And what I mean by that is, is depending on the position of this knock, um, how the shaft is oriented can influence the spine of the arrow. Um, if you've ever heard of, of, of things called knock tuning, that's because of circumferential spine consistency of the shaft. Um, the reason why Easton arrows, and especially the, the Axis series, are very consistent in spine is because of the process that is used to make these arrows, which is virtually different than every other arrow manufacturer in the industry. 
So the reason why the eastern arrow is, is, is different, the pultrusion process is, is essentially one long arrow. It, this, the, there's, you, you can imagine an arrow behind this and an arrow in front of this. And as the, as the machine kicks out, as kicks out the arrow, if you will, it kind of, you kind of cut it to length versus uh, a wrap and roll process, which is how other arrows are made. Uh, they start with a mandrel with a preset length. They roll layers of carbon fiber uh, with the resin, uh, layer on layer on layer. <clears throat> and then eventually uh, with all those layers built up, those arrows are, are ground to length are ground to, uh, ground to diameter and, and weight. That process can, can lead to, to circumferential spine issues. Um, so depending on how the knock is oriented, uh, the, the dynamic spine of the arrow may change with that circumferential spine variation. The pultrusion process does a really good job of eliminating, eliminating those kinds of, of uh, circumferential spine inconsistencies uh, so it's, it's a very good arrow for, for hunting and shooting fixed blade broadheads um, because of how consistent it is. With your length, we, we settled, immediately knew that we were gonna have to go with a 250 spine. Mm. Um, we'll probably set this up with, uh, um, we'll have to, we'll kind of play out with the weight and archer's advantage to see where we need to be. Um, but uh, I think we're gonna try to, to be in that, um, right around, I mean, it would be great if we could get you up above 300 feet per second. Mm -hmm. oh, um, yeah. Do you have, uh, based off of previous arrows that you've shot, um, you've been shooting a 250 spine probably for a while. I shot a lower poundage bow before, so I was shooting a 300, 300 spine. spine. okay. Yep, but yeah. Do you have an idea of uh, how, how long the carbon to carbon was on that arrow? Uh, I could get it to about 29 and a quarter. Okay, um, so we're going to be in that 29 to 30. Your yep. draw length's 31. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think uh, we'll see how it plays out in Archer's Advantage, but I think if we, if we, you'll probably, I'd like to see if we can get you close to 450-ish mm -hmm. in that, I don't know, in that realm. With your draw length, a little longer shaft, um, we'll, see, we'll see where it plays out. Another point to make, um, we've kind of, you and I have talked about this at length when you were deciding on a bow for the year, but the Hoyt kind of covered up my face there. Um, with the Hoyt um, and kind of these new, these newer bows, um, you know, bows in the last five years, you may perceive haven't done a lot of may, maybe advancements, you know, the speeds have all kind of stayed the same. Mm -hmm. The thing that I think is really improved on bows that kind of goes unmentioned is their efficiency at transferring all of the string energy to even lighter arrows. So, um, you know, back in the day and especially shooting like a recurve or a longbow, uh, you needed to shoot a heavier arrow simply to get more energy. Uh, the bow, the string mm -hmm. is going to do a better job of transferring all of the energy to a heavier arrow. Mm -hmm. Well, modern compound bows and especially this Hoyt RX-7 does a really good job of transferring, you know, 90 plus percent of the string energy even into a, a, a lighter arrow. Mm -hmm. um, so personally, I like you, I do a lot of, uh, you know, I'm a deer guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, heck, we did yeah. our Arizona hunt this year. I'm hunting constantly in the high country back home. Uh, my arrow ends up uh, 425 grains and it's going like 320 feet per second. Mm -hmm. So. I have, I, I really value that range, pers that, that range forgiveness perspective. Um, so we'll try to build you up something the same, uh, try to get you up above 300 feet per second. Okay, so we've got the shaft here. So what I'm thinking, building this arrow out, like I said, we'll probably be in that, I don't know, 30 inch plus or minus finish length, um, archer's advantage and tuning that arrow to your bow will, will kind of dictate the ultimate length. Okay, so uh, in Brody's arrow build, we're gonna be, we have um, his Easton Axis Long Range, and then we've got the hit insert. Um, the hit insert, this is a deep six hit. It actually goes up inside the shaft. And it completely goes inside, and it stops about, about right there. Uh, so it's completely hidden inside the shaft. It's a hidden insert technology is what hit stands for. Um, from there, you screw in, so this is, the insert is in the shaft, the fill, the fill tip or the broadhead screws into it. 
This is up inside the shaft. Sits in there like that, and you can see that the, the shank of the broadhead, that's this part of the fill tip or the broadhead, is, is now directly in contact with the arrow, right? That, that insert is glued in there. Um, so the hit insert, the reason why it's, it's really important is because it, it directly aligns the shoulder of the broadhead, which is that piece of the broadhead. That's the highest or best tolerance part of the broadhead. It directly aligns it to the inner diameter of the arrow. The inner diameter of the arrow is the foundation of the arrow. It's the best tolerance part of the arrow. So the hit insert directly aligns the best tolerance part of the broadhead to the best tolerance part of the arrow for the best concentricity or simply put arrow alignment. Uh, it promotes, it, it gives you the best possible chance to have perfect alignment between the arrow and the broadhead. So the broadhead spins true. One potential vulnerability since there is no metal, um, since there is no metal, so the insert is glued in and then the, the shaft come, or the broadhead comes in and spins into it. There is no metal protecting the front of, of the uh, uh, front of the arrow like a conventional insert. So in comes the iron wheel collar. The iron wheel collar um, protects the front of the arrow from, from side breakouts. Um, it it uh, stiffens that it stiffens that up, it protects it from the side breakouts, and is altogether just a, a really good system. That collar. Uh, extends from the very front of the arrow back over the the hit insert that's inside the shaft, and um, uh, this particular collar is is one inch and 25 grains, and and protects that all up. I've been running hit inserts and in arrows that uh, since I don't know for the last eight years. I, I was running hit inserts in and gold tips and victories. Mm -hmm. And um, I really like the hit insert. One other thing to mention is since we are shooting a four millimeter arrow, in order to have uh, an insert system that is inserted into the arrow and not out in front of the arrow, mm -hmm. uh, we need to go with deep six. Mm -hmm. And that's simply a, a diameter thing. Um, in order to shoot four millimeter arrows, if you want to shoot four millimeter arrows with a with a standard broadhead, you'd have to be shooting a half out or 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 a full out in this case with a four millimeter arrow. Um, I've had bad experience with the with the um, with half outs. They they typically they bend really easy. They don't promote a lot of they don't promote the best alignment with the shaft because you can imagine you know, any manufactured piece is going to have some tolerance. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, if you've got an insert that is sticking out from the shaft and it's off even a thousandth of a degree, mm -hmm. you know, that the fact that it's sticking out can cant your, 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 in, your, um, your broadhead or your fill tip to one direction. Right. Um, so I just do not like to shoot half outs or, or, or outserts. Um, so we, we need to shoot deep six. Um, the benefit of shooting deep six with the iron wheel collar is that the, the collar is gonna be there to, to stiffen that connection up. Mm -hmm. And with the collar, I've had absolute great success with uh, the deep six hit insert, deep six broadhead mm. with an iron wheel collar. So Perfect. I think you, know, you and I previously talked about that. You were fully on board there. Absolutely. Um, We've got a 25 grain collar and a 100 grain tip. So we're looking at 45, 145, 100 and 145 to 160 ish grains that we can play with up front. Mm -hmm. um, we got the, the, the shaft and if you settled on that new iron wheel vein, um, it's the uh, you know more about AAE, but uh, it's in conjunction yeah. with AAE. It looks like it's the the Max, yeah, the it's Max, the Hunter, Max Hunter. Max it's Hunter. Previously, they only made it in the Max material. material. Yep. Um, but now, uh, through Iron, iron Will, it's in the iron will, it's in the hybrid. It's making the Hunter cut, but in the hybrid material. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting vein. Uh, me being the geek that I am, I um, 
seeing his his raw data out from uh, the mm -hmm. testing it certainly intrigued me uh, that the profile of that vein being a little taller is getting into the we won't get fully into the details but that but the the height of that vein is really the most important thing to get up into the yeah the pressure region where you're you're seeing as the pressure propagates air pressure propagates out from the the shaft mm -hmm. from from friction and and all that it seems like that height is is really the yeah. most important yeah. thing to get the the steering mm -hmm. okay cool well we'll uh we'll yeah. get to archer's advantage and see if we can build something out um just real quick contrasting that if you were to sit water if you mm -hmm. were to you know going on an elk hunt where you did plan to hunt in thick timber yeah. um contrasting the really light arrow the light arrow that's shooting fast i think in those situations if you would have told me that you wanted to shoot, you know, you're going on an elk hunt. That was your mm -hmm. priority. It's going to be thick timber, maybe sit in some water. Sure. I would have steered you in the completely opposite direction. I would have, we would have gone with probably uh, something, something that we could have got a 200 spine in and we would have mm -hmm. loaded that up with a lot of point weight, yeah. um, maybe even an FMJ or something at that point. Yeah. We would have loaded up a, a lot of point weight and we would have been targeting an, an arrow you know, north of 600 grains mm -hmm. in my mind, because you don't, you don't necessarily want to wait in close quarters for that perfect broadside shot. Mm -hmm. You can wait for that at extended distance, mm -hmm. but uh, in close range, you kind of want to just take that first decent shot. Mm -hmm. And if he's a little quartering too, I think um, uh, that's really where having a really heavy arrow that if you happen to, to catch that shoulder, uh, having a really heavy arrow with a stout fixed blade broadhead, um, uh, you'll be able to penetrate that front shoulder. So I think mm -hmm. you've got two different views of forgiveness. You got a long range view of forgiveness, which is trajectory, and you got kind of a shorter range view of forgiveness, which is what I would call shot angle forgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, so we we previously talked about uh, broadheads a little bit. I think. What are you thinking? You're thinking of the yeah, I think we're going to do the this just 100 grain sever. Um, deep six. Deep six, yep. Um, on almost every arrow on my quiver this year, and then maybe have one or maybe two of the iron wheels. Yeah, um, and you going at 300 feet per second is probably a little faster than I'd like to see a lot of the mm -hmm. um, fixed blades, but it, I think it's I, and as good mm -hmm. as you shoot, I think it's still. I think it's still there, so I think you could you could still shoot a a, yeah. a fixed blade at that speed. Yeah, as kind of backup. Yeah, I think, but primarily it's going to be that that's that deep six sever. Cool. Really one point five. Uh, one two point oh. I shot a one point five last year and really liked what it did, so I think I'm going to stay with the one point five. In terms of penetration and yep, penetration. Decent blood and. Yep. Yep. Good. Lots of blood. Um, yeah, still got good penetration. I just think we'll stay with that. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get to designing this arrow. Cool. Okay, here we are in Archer's Advantage. This is kind of the software that I've used the most. Um, so it's it's my preferred choice to look at, at spine and arrow efficiency, that sort of thing. Um, here I've built in Brody's uh, bow configuration and arrow configuration. And uh, this is just helping us to, to get the correct spine in his arrow or figure out what... Uh, um, what spine shafts we should get him. Um, preemptively, I told him to order 250 spine, uh, just knowing his his length at a 31 inch draw length. Um, 70 pound bow, I preemptively knew that he needed a 250 spine, so that's what he bought. Building out his arrow, he's shooting the Easton four millimeter axis long range. Um, kind of his target weight was trying to be around 450 to 460 grains. Uh, so we're building out the arrow um, kind of took a guess at the, at the arrow length, which we'll show later in the shaft selector, uh, tab over here, looking at spine point details, as we mentioned before, he's going to be shooting the iron will, um, collar system with the Easton hit insert that weighs, uh, 20 grains, but iron will offers those, uh, deep six hit inserts in 15 25, 50, 75, and 100. Uh, combine that with a 25 grain collar. So we got 100, 100 grains in point weight. 
uh, here, and then we've got uh, point adapter weight is uh, a combination of the 20 grain deep six hit insert and the 25 grain collar, stainless or steel collar, not stainless. Knock, knock details, the deep six knock, the Easton deep six knock weighs six grains that comes with it. He's going to be shooting the, the Iron Will Max Hunter or the, the Iron Will Max profile vein, but I think the material is different in the, the vein from Iron Will. Uh, so this weight, I think, is a little high. I think the vein from Iron Will is like six and a half grains. Um, but that, but that's close enough for what we're trying to do here. So that's how we, we've built out, uh, his arrow. I should have mentioned beforehand that that's all here under the setup tab, um, where you build out the arrow site configuration. We don't need to get into for spine, but, uh, this bow configuration tab right here is pretty important. So we select there, come down here to select bow from list. Uh, we've selected Hoyt. Uh, RX-7, pretty self-explanatory. There's only one set of limbs, one set of cams, no drop-down options there. We say transfer data to current current setup. Um, his peak weight, which we already measured, uh, is uh, 72 pounds. Uh, brace height just self-populates at, at, at 7 inches. His draw length is uh, 31, so we entered that. Um so this is coming up, this comes up with, uh, this saying that his curl, so the, the program will derate the IBO speed rating for any, uh, for, for changes to a setup that are different from IBO. So, um, Archer's advantage is predicting that his arrow is going to be going 308 feet per second. Now, just because I've done this a lot, uh, we haven't finished his arrow design yet, um, this is kind of just preliminary, but having used Archer's Advantage a bunch for myself and my friends, typically this number that Archer's Advantage comes out with is five to 10 feet per second fast. So I think that his, his true, my guess right now, before we build, before we have this arrow built is going to be probably around 300 feet per second. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Like I said, um, the, it, this tends to be five to 10 feet per second fast. And the reason for that is weight on the string um, that, that kind of slows everything down. That's the peep uh, and, the, and the, the D loop, if you will. So 300 feet per second. Okay, so we've got his profile built out completely now. And once, once you're finished with that, you go out of the setup and you go, get here into shaft selector. Okay, so here you can see kind of a, a rundown of, of total aero specs. 29 and a half uh, point weight is 145. A peak draw weight, 72. Estimated aero weight is 463. You can see the, the, the deviation that I made for the um, estimated speed from 308 to 300 was captured. It's estimating an FOC of 12.8, which is good. Uh, anywhere 10 to 15 is, is a great spot to be uh, more. You can have more FOC. I don't really concentrate so much on, on FOC. I like to see it above 10. Other than that, I don't really focus on it. So you can see, you can see now that uh, this is capturing the energy out of his bow. Um, it also taking into account the point weight and how, how the, the point weight and the arrow length with the energy of the bow um, affect the dynamic spine of the arrow. Uh, the green here is is would be considered perfect spine. In my experience, though, I like to be in this yellow category, uh, this marginal marginally stiff category. Uh, the reason for that is there's really no harm in being overspined with a modern compound bow, and when you add, you will most definitely add length to your arrow when you put a broadhead on it. Uh, broadheads are typically, especially mechanical broadheads, are a lot longer than fill tips. Uh, so having that extra 
a little bit of extra spine in the uh, in the arrow is, is great. Uh, I also like cutting my shaft down um, as as basically as short as possible. Um, that's kind of where we figured with the twenty nine and a half with with uh, with Brody was about as short as we can cut it and still have room for the iron wheel collar, so that collar doesn't come back on the on the rest. And so that's where we landed. Um, I've got to imagine that we'll probably start testing. We'll probably shoot a full. We'll insert a full length, full length arrow and shoot it at 32 inches. My guess is it'll tear a week. Um, from there, we'll probably cut it down to to 30, maybe 30 and a half. Cut an inch or two off of that. See how it tears, and we'll slowly from there we'll slowly dial it back. If it's still tearing stiff or perfect at 29 at 30 inches we can cut down to 29 and a half is about as low as, as short as we can cut it and still have uh, clearance from that collar so if, if from here you can play around once you've entered everything in you can you can change some of these values here to see how it will react how, how the arrow will react uh, so you can see if I if I change this to 32 um, it's saying that the the spine is now, saying the spine is now optimum again i like to um in my experience the this yellow spot is where where i like to be um if we if we up this draw length we can change that here too it'll it'll increase the it'll give a projected increase on speed you can see here as I've changed these numbers, uh, if I change as I changed the shaft length, it changed the the total arrow weight, which affected the speed. It automatically guesses on all of that. Uh, when you uh, input the oh, change in uh, peak weight, it it guesses how that's going to impact on the speed. Um, typically, all all else being equal, a good rule of thumb is um, is about two feet per second per pound of Per pound of, of, of draw weight, so you can see 75, um, 75 pound draw weight is about 300 feet per second. So if I drop that down to 70, we drop to to uh, to about two two ninety. So seventy five, two ninety nine. So yeah. It dropped about 10, 10 pounds or 10 feet per second. So that's just kind of a quick run through of Archer's Advantage. There's a whole lot more to it um, that we can get into in later videos, but that's just a quick run through of how I use this to to look at uh, spine for a very specific arrow build. It's a great tool uh, and it's definitely more more accurate than your conventional spine chart because it's taking into account your point weight um, and, a, and a few other things. Like I said, I like to be here in this yellow. Uh, that's, that's the sweet spot for me.